Hello there, I'm Dan from the Centre for Computing History and I have a little project for the Twilight at Home event 2021. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to make an 8-bit solar system interactive map. We're going to be building it using Scratch. Scratch is a free browser-based uh, programming development suite. Um, it's very basic, it uses Lego-like blocks to chunk together and make programs run. You can make animations and games and all sorts of cool things in Scratch. So here we are with our finished product, the 8-bit solar system. Let's have a quick go, press space to start. Here's our pretty crude 8-bit style map of the solar system. In the bottom right, we have our craft, and we have our eight major planets, and of course, we have little Pluto in the bottom right there. So to play, uh, left and right rotates our craft, and up makes it boost. And as we fly around, we touch the planets, and we get a bit of information about them. Just basic stuff you can find out on Wikipedia or from your own knowledge, perhaps. I haven't done them all because uh, the idea is that you go away and you fill in these gaps yourself doing your own research. All right, so there we are. That's our finished product. Let's see how we go about making it. Okay, so first things first, you're going to need to download the art assets from our website. That's in the link below. Basically, you're going to need some art assets. Here are our assets. You'll need five uh, images, uh, one called a planet marker, two rocket ones to have it boost and not boosting, a map of the solar system and the title screen. Once you've got those uh, downloaded and unzipped in a safe place, point your browser to scratch.mit.edu. That's the website for the Scratch uh, development area. And go up to create. Okay, this is the Scratch desktop. So in the far left, you have different categories of blocks. You have motion blocks, looks, sound, events, control, sensing, operators, variables, and my blocks. We're not gonna be using all of these today. Our program is very, very simple. So we're only gonna be using uh, motion, looks, sounds, events, control, and sensing, which sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. So obviously motion controls the way things move on screen. Looks controls uh, how things appear, size, uh, visibility, uh, animations. Sound, makes sound effects. Events, uh, that's when stuff happens. And control is to, uh, well, control things within game. Uh, what happens if you press buttons? What happens at certain times? Uh, sending messages, all sorts of things. So, let's get cracking. First thing first, get rid of that cat. Delete sprite one. Now let's add our space uh, map. If we go down to the bottom right here, Choose a backdrop, we're gonna upload it. And we're gonna choose our solar system map. There we are, that's put it into our game. It's all fit nicely in the screen. That's great, lovely stuff. We don't need to do anything at the minute, so now we can start thinking about our spaceship. Our spaceship is a sprite. Sprites are handled here, so let's add our new sprite. Choose a sprite, upload a sprite. Let's have our rocket sprite. That's our default rocket. And as you can see, that's far too big uh, to be in the game. That's crazy. So let's change it by using size down here. I think that's far too big. I think we want it to be about a third. That's all right. It might be still a bit too big. Let's make it down to a quarter. Okay, that works for me. Uh, again, you can have yours any size you like. That's great. So let's get it moving. We need to have uh, a block that signifies what to do when the program starts itself. In Scratch, the program starts whenever you hit this green flag. It starts here and stops with this one. Over in events, we have a block called when the green flag is clicked. This is your overall starting point. When the green flag is clicked, do something. In this case, we want our spaceship to move around. Now, when I start the game up, I don't want the sprite to appear in a random position, I want it always to appear in the bottom left. So what we can do, we can grab our sprite over here, grab it, drag it, and drop it down here, for example, or over here. Anywhere there's a nice empty space. Okay. So we want to control motion. So we go across to motion, like that, and go to, boom. 
Scratch is very handy. It's already put these coordinates, the X or horizontal axis and the Y or vertical axis, it's already input these into our program. So, and if I press the green flag, it'll snap to where we want it to start. So whenever your game starts, it's always going to start in this place, which is great. Okay, lovely stuff. Now, this isn't very much fun. Uh, it's not doing anything. Let's. So what we need to do now, we need to create a, an if statement. Basically, the program needs to ask a question. That question is, is the direction being pressed? And if the answer is yes, then do something. So over in control, we have these beautiful if blocks. If, if something in this block here, then do something in this block here. Ours is if a button is pressed, rotate the craft. And it's really simple to do this. Over in sensing, we go key, something pressed. It can be anything. Most of the keyboards represent on here, but we want to say left arrow. Okay, let's duplicate this. Let's have two. And have this one to be the right arrow. So if the left arrow is pressed, then do something. And if the right arrow is pressed, then do something else. What do you want it to do? Rotate. Rotate, that's movement. Back to motion. Motion. We're going to turn. Turn right, turn left. Want to match these up? That's a left circle. Bang. And bang. Very important point. When green flag is clicked, whatever you have attached this block only happens once at the very, very, very start of the program. So if I attach this to this, when I click the green flag, our spaceship will magically teleport here. But if I press left and right, nothing's going to happen. Look, for green flag to start, we're where we should be. But if I press left and right, nothing's going to happen. But if I press and hold left and click the green flag, click, 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 click. Because every time I hit the green flag, it's doing that action. That's not ideal. What we need to do is have it forever to always be asking that question. So back to control, we go to forever, put this in here, put this in here. So now if we hit the green flag, we have our spaceship where it should be, but if we do left and right, we have our very fast moving ship. I think that's a bit too fast for me. I'm going to drop that down to, let's say, uh, four. Four, five, whatever you like. It's up to you. Try it. See what you come up with. That's nice. That's quite a sedate, sedate pace for a spaceship there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we've got left and right movement. That's great. Another thing I might like to do is that when the game starts, I always want it facing a certain direction. So when the game starts, I want it to be facing... Uh, straight up. So let's have point and direction set to zero. Okay, so it points straight up. So if we press green now, it'll snap to be vertical. Great, we have our ship. We have it turning left and right. Let's get it moving forward. Now what we want to do now is the same thing, really. Uh, what we can do is just grab this and duplicate it again. I can say if the up arrow is pressed, then we don't want to turn, we want to move. And because we've already set our angle, we want it to move in the angle at which your spacecraft is facing. So all we do is just say move X amount of steps. Okay, let's see how this looks. Stop, start, press up. Oh, that's a bit fast. Oh, that's way too fast for me. But we have movement. Our ship is now moving. And it's moving in the direction the ship is pointing in. That's really handy. I think that's too high. I'm going to drop that down to five. It seems like a nice number. Start, stop. That's nice. Quite a leisurely trip around the solar system. Great. Okay, that's cool. But uh, while we're here, uh, let's finish off our ship movement. Let's put an animation in here. Let's have it so that if you press the up button to boost, you you see it you see it represented on the sprite itself. You see the little boosters fire. So if we go to our sprite, we've got our sprite here, and up in the top left, we've got these tabs. Code, which is where we are now, 
costumes and sounds. Go to costumes. I'm going to add a costume. Choose a costume. Upload costume. I'm going to upload the one called Rocket Boost Sprite. Really simple. So we have our two sprites, not boosting and boosting. Very simple, very basic effect. Back to code. Now we need to make some changes to our code here. So we don't want this to be like this. We want it to be two conditions. We want it to say, if you're pressing up, have the boost effect on. But if that isn't being pressed, don't have the boost effect. So what we need to do here is get a block called an if or an else. Control, if or else. And this stuff we can keep. If the up arrow is pressed, then move five steps. Great, but we want to switch between the two costumes, boost and not boost. So we go across to looks, and we say switch costume two. So if the up arrow is pressed, then move five steps, but also I want to see it boosting. There we go. But if we aren't pressing up, we aren't moving and we aren't boosting, I want the costume to be normal, the basic default. Delete your old blocks just by dragging and dropping over there. Okay, let's add this to our chain. Stop, start. Our ship has teleported back to where we want it to be. It's facing uh, vertical up. So if we press up now, great, there we are. It's boosting its way around the solar system. We, we, we're we 80 percent finished now. Uh, it's a very simple, very easy program. Basically, let's just run through our code here. So when the green flag is clicked, we want our character to appear at these coordinates. X is the length ways and Y is the uh, vertical ways um, and point straight up. This can be, of course, these can be anything. It's up to you. Where do you want your thing to be uh, appearing when you start the game and what direction should it be looking in? So that's our basic. That's what happens when you very first start the program. It goes here pointing here. Constantly, uh, the program is asking, are you pressing left? And if it says yes, then it turns. Are you pressing right? Then it turns. Are you pressing up? Then it goes forward and changes costume. And if you're not doing any of these things, it's going to be, it won't move and it will have the standard sprite. Okay, so now we need to think about adding our planets. So our planets are already on the map, but we need to add little things called hitboxes to tell the computer what to do when your ship lands on them. So again, let's add a sprite, upload a sprite. We want to upload the planet marker. It appears in the middle of our screen, that's no good. So what we need to do is we need to have one of these for every object on our map. Let's start with the sun. Let's drag it over to where the sun is. And as you can see, that's not very good because our sun is much bigger than the hitbox. So what we're going to do is we're going to resize it until we get it about right. So I'm going to say that's maybe 150. 150. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So now we've completely covered our sun. But that's no good to us because if we start the game, stop start, we can no longer see our sun. And we're just going to have nine purple circles covering our map. That's massively not good for us. So what we need to do is we need to add a little effect that says when you press the green flag, I want that to disappear, but still be active. So what we do is we go to events. When the green flag is clicked, and again, because we're talking about appearances, we go to looks and we go set. Set, we have a bunch of effects here. All the different things, but today we're gonna to be focusing on ghost. Ghost uh, effects transparency. So all we need to do in here is put an enormous number in here, just like that, blah, 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 blah. and uh, that will make it disappear when we start. So let's try it. So start the game, bang, it's gone. But very, very, very important, um, it's still there. It's still live, you just can't see it. There are other things you can do in Scratch, which is hide a sprite, but then a sprite isn't active. So setting ghosts is a really handy way of having things on screen that the player can't see, but can still interact with. So here we are, we're great, we're done. Let's change the name of this so we know what we're talking about. Let's call this Sun. 
So now we know that we have an invisible hitbox called the sun on top of the sun. We can't see it, but if we double click on it, you can see the outline of it. That's great. So we need to do this nine more times. That seems like a lot, but it's not because you can just duplicate all of your sprites. So if you right click on the sun, say duplicate, sun two. Sun two is here. So stop the program, we can see our purple dots. Sun 2 is here. Uh, I'm going to move it to roughly over here, over Mercury, and drop it right down in size. So let's say 50. That's not bad. It's just, he said it's a bit too small. I think we made that 55 will be solid gold. That looks great. Okay, lovely stuff. Okay, let's rename that one Mercury. And because we duplicated it, we copied the code across. So we don't need to add that code in. So now if we start the game again, it automatically disappears, but it's still live. Okay, so really simple. All you have to do now, I'm gonna leave it up to you. Go through, duplicate your sprites and make a hitbox for every other planet in your solar system. Pause the video, make your hitboxes, start the video again. Okay, so welcome back. So here we have all our planets mapped out. Uh, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, all present and correct, all covered with the hitboxes. If I press green flag, they all disappear. Lovely stuff, great. Now let's think about what happens when the two interact. So back to our spaceship. We start thinking about some code in here. What we need now is a bunch of if conditionals to decide what happens if the ship is touching Earth, or if the ship is touching Mars, or Jupiter, or whatever, what should it do when these two things are colliding? So, over in events, we just start a new block of code to hold all these, uh, all these different conditions. And again, forever block is very, very important because that means it's constantly asking the question. So, the question is, if I am touching a planet, what do you want me to do? So, if something, then something else. Now, very, very, very important. Um, because we have loads of different planets, we need to do this multiple times. There needs to be multiple conditions. So what we need to do is say, if we're touching this planet, do this. If not, are you touching another planet or another planet or another planet? We want to be asking the question, Constantly, are you touching any of the planets? So if we go across to sensing, really handy feature for collision detection is touching. If touching, blah, 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 blah. Let's start with the sun. If touching the sun, I want you to do something. What do we want it to do? Well, we want it to pop up with a speech bubble and give a bit of information about that. So again, that's over in looks. Looks, say. So if you're touching the sun, then say something. I'm gonna put that in here. This is the sun. That's it. This is where you come in. Uh, you can go away and find your own information out, get your own facts, get your own statistics, your own numbers, and then put them into this text field here. So that's great. So if we're touching the sun, then say this is the sun. Else, well, what else? Uh, we need more, don't we? What we can do is just duplicate this. Duplicate and say if touching Mercury. Mercury. And change that to say, oh, change that to say is Mercury. And put that inside there. But um. So now the question is, are you touching the sun? If you are, do this. But if you're not, well, maybe you're touching Mercury. Are you touching Mercury? If yes, then yes. If not, uh, something else. Duplicate. If you're touching Venus. If you're touching Earth. And again. Ah, keep doing that. This is... Venus.
this is Earth. See how we're going now? So if touching Sun, do this, or are you touching Mercury? Do this, or if you're touching Venus, do this, or Earth. Okay, challenge for you, finish this for the rest of the planets. Press pause now, do a great big block of all the different planets and what you wanted to say for each of them, then start the video up again. Okay then, so welcome back. So uh, you should have a great big list of what happens if you touch certain planets. <laughs> a great big stretch of code like this. Da -da -da -da. What happens at the final bit though? Uh, the problem is, uh, if you run at any of these, it's always going to say this. So if you touch Pluto, for example, and you leave Pluto and fly somewhere else, it's always going to say this is Pluto. That's not ideal. What we can do, a little cheesy way of getting around it. If you're not touching any of the planets, say nothing at all. Okay, so if we put this block into our forever block, okay, we should be ready to go. So a quick test. Press the green flag. So our markers have all disappeared. Our spaceship is working, boost, boost, and if we go near a planet, this is Saturn. Yes, it is. This is Mars. This is Mercury. This is the Sun. This is the Earth. Da -da -da. We have it. So hopefully uh, your information is a bit more advanced than mine. Just repeating the planet's name isn't very exciting. Hopefully you've got some big old facts and statistics in there. That'd be really great. So uh, a few things to change. Uh, for example, if we point uh, to the right, we fly off screen, that's not ideal. So we can get around that with a very simple piece of code. If touching the edge, we want you to bounce back. So motion, if on edge, bounce. We'll also, let's make a little comedy sound in here. Let's incorporate a sound. Top left, sounds, click it. Let's add a sound. Choose a sound. Uh, so a weird boingy sound. Boing. Boing. Let's have that. Click that. Now that's in our sound library. Go back to our code. We can say sound. Start sound. Boing. Right. So if our pilot goes to the edge, it will hit the edge. It will bounce off in another direction and it will go the boing and it will go boing. Put it there. Great, here we are. So let's start a program from scratch. Start the program. Start the program. Great, let's go. Flying around. My rocket boosters are working. This is Saturn. That is Jupiter. That's Earth. Boing. And I'm bounced back on. Boing. Boing. <laughs> Great, that seems to be working very, very nicely indeed. So we are 90% there. What we can do is. Uh, if someone loads your game, if you gave your friend the code, if you gave a friend the address to play your game, um, when I load it up, it would look like this. It would look like this, and that's not great. You don't want to see the hitboxes. That'd be awful. Um, what we can do is we can introduce a title screen. So that when the when you give the address to your friend to play, or you play it yourself, the first thing you see is the title screen and not the actual game screen. So let's add our title screen. Choose a sprite, upload a sprite and upload our solar system title. And we want this to be the first thing people see. So that means we want it to be on when the green flag is clicked. When the green flag is clicked, we want it to appear. So that's over in looks, show. When the green flag is clicked, make this title screen appear. Awesome. What we're also gonna do as a little uh, safety measure is go to the front layer. Because we've got sprites on top of sprites, we've got planets on top of the uh, backdrop and all sorts of things, it's really easy to lose track and maybe there's a chance that one of the hitboxes will appear above this. So if we set this to the front layer, we always know that it's going to be visible by show and it's also going to be the only thing they see. The rest of the game is hidden underneath this image. Okay, so we've got a prompt here to press space. So we want it to be, so if the player presses space, get rid of this image and start the game itself. So again, control forever, ask the question, is space being pressed? So, is key space pressed? 
So if it is pressed, what do you want it to do? We want it to disappear. So, looks, hide. All right, let's put it all together then. Let's see what happens then, shall we? So if we run our program, so we've hit the green flag. This has appeared at the top layer. Um, underneath, our code is still running. If I click the green flag, if I click the spaceship, we can see it moving around. That's not ideal, because you can see the text through the image. So what we need to do, come out of that. What we need to do is we need to change it so that when you hit the green flag, the title screen code runs, but the ship does not run. So what we do here is we do something called broadcasting. That's when one sprite sends a message to another sprite saying, hey, do something now. So what we're gonna do is when space is pressed, we're gonna broadcast events, broadcast. We can call our message whatever we want. Let's put it a new name in here. Let's broadcast start. So, what's going to happen is, you go to the website, you find your file, you hit the green flag, it's going to appear with this uh, title screen, and if you press space, the title screen will disappear, and a message called start will be broadcasted to all the other sprites. What we want to do is we want to make the rocket sprite listen for this message. So we click on our rocket sprite again. Okay. So uh, we don't want this to be live from the start. Because as you saw before, when we rotated it, it, it could move around in the background and it could bleed through, the, the, the messages could bleed through onto the title screen. That's not what we want at all. What we can do is that either of these really, you can just take the block away, take that and say, rather than when I, when the green flag is clicked, when I receive start. That's great. So now, if we run our program, stop start. So our 8-bit solar system, press space. Our rocket appears in the bottom right. We can rotate it. it gives us the message. Great. And if we go off screen, Boing. 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 we get the sound effects. Awesome. And like I said, uh, you can make both of these when I receive start now. It really doesn't matter because they are uh, locked together, really. Um, you can't touch any of these without you using this one. But for the uh, sake of cleanliness, let's just do that. That's us done. Uh, there's one minor change we can make. Um, we reset our game. We press space. It just disappears. It just bangs straight into the... There's no transition between the two. Um, what I like to do is... Um, I'd like to have like a, a little, a fade, a transition between the two states. So if we go back to our title screen here, rather than just have simple hide, because that's, it's brutal, it's, it's a bit too much. What we can do is we can have it to slowly fade out. And this you already know how to do. It's the same method as making the planets disappear. If we go to looks, uh, we can change our ghost. So at the start, it's set to uh, zero, because there's no ghosting. You want to see the solid image. What we want to do is you want to make it take away, say, 10% every time. Every time it runs, every time the, the program cycles. So what we can do is go across to control and repeat 10. If this is repeat 10, this will need to be 10. Because 10 tens are 100. So if we have 100 to start with and you repeat it 10 times, you end up with uh, 100 rather. So this will, every time it runs a cycle, so every once every 30 for the second, it will run through the program. Every 30 for the second, it will reduce the image down by 10% until it becomes invisible. So if we go across and dump it in there, start a program, start a program. What's it gonna look like? Press space. Nice, that's a nice transition. So let's run through our code then. So our program is largely governed by this bad boy. So when we first start the program, we have our title screen. When the green flag is clicked, 
show the title screen and make it go to the top, just for uh, cleanliness sake. And as long as this is on screen, I want you to forever check to see if the space key is pressed. And if the space key is pressed, we want to transmit this message and we want to reduce the effect by 10, 10 times. So gradually we'll go from being a solid image to a see-through invisible image. Great. So this broadcast message, we want that to apply to our rocket ship. So when you receive that message, I want you to go down to the bottom right. These coordinates, they could be anywhere. Look in this direction and forever ask the question, is left being pressed? Is right being pressed? Is up being pressed? And if so, turn left, turn right, go forward, uh, change your sprite to have a rocket boost or just go back to the default sprite. And the other thing I want to be checking for is, are you touching a planet? So when the game begins, forever check to see if the rocket sprite is touching the edge of the screen. And if so, bounce back on and make a bong noise. If you're touching the sun, say this. Touching Mercury, say this. Touching Venus, say this. Da -da 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 -da. All the way down until you've covered all your bases and there's nothing else to say about anything. Just say nothing. And of course, our planets are super simple. Uh, when the green flag is clicked, they all just boop, disappear. Lovely. Okay, so that's us pretty much done here. The final run through, go full screen, green to start, press space. Here we are, let's fly around the solar system. All right, and that's us. So hopefully you've got some more uh, inventive descriptions for the planets. <laughs> and of course, again, feel free to change the art. This is something I just threw together uh, very quickly using uh, pixel editing software. Um, maybe you can go onto the internet and find a, a, an authentic or a real, more realistic picture of the solar system you'd like to use. Maybe you could use an image of the actual space shuttle, uh, a NASA shuttle, for example. All of these things are changeable and uh, you don't even need to change the code. If you have a different image you'd like to use, all you have to do is just go to the image itself, go to costumes, and just change it. So you can have a completely different costume in here, no worries. And all you need to do is just highlight it and switch over to it, and you can delete the one you don't want. Same thing for your rocket ship. Uh, if you don't like this one, have another one. Just add a new costume and delete the ones you had. But remember, if you change the costume names, you have to change your references in the code to make it animate. All right, so. That's all from us. Thank you very, very much indeed. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, any questions, comments, queries, feel free to email me at the address provided on the screen. And uh, as part of the Twilight at Home event, this has been Dan from the Center for Computing History. Happy coding.